you know what? I feel like all of you guys out there take me for granted. No, 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 no. You don't understand everything I do for this show. I spend hours coming up with the funniest jokes. I spend many sleepless nights coming up with topics and picking only the best films for the podcast crew to watch. It takes time and effort to pick such classics that I know all the guys are going to love, such as Clowntergeist and Sledgehammer. Do I even get one thank you from any of you? No. If you so if you think this is so easy, why don't you guys do it? That's right. This episode, the attackers picked a movie on this episode of Attack of the Killer Podcast. Attention planet Earth and beyond. Stay tuned for Attack of the Killer guys what's up what's up i'm better now i hope so this is attack of the killer podcast and i am your host insane mike this is episode 257 and we're going to turn over the show to the patreon supporters when you become a patreon supporter you become part of an exclusive group we call the attackers we have gotten requests for films to talk about from the attackers so we are going to do an all attacker show all the films that we are discussing tonight are picked by them. I know you love this perk uh, because you get out of <laughs> the firing squad. I know. Can we move? <laughs> can we move this perk up to the dollar perk <laughs> to the dollar tier, <clears throat> fifty cent tier? Um. Anyway, but uh, I was say, picking a movie. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Picking a movie for us to talk about on the show is not all that you get by supporting the show. You can get bonus episodes, you can get the regular episodes early, you get our video series, like video updates, and say Mike's Women in the Top Ten list, Killer Critiques. Uh, you can get a membership card, certificate, sticker, um, all kinds of cool stuff, all kinds of cool perks that you can get. And you can check all of that out at jointheattackers.com. So you can go there, pick the tier to get the perks that best suit you. Definitely recommend the tier where you get to suggest movies for the show. Again, that <laughs> site is jointheattackers.com. Now, what is Attack of the Killer Podcast? If this is your first time listening, let me tell you a little bit about us. Attack of the Killer Podcast is a horror movie podcast where a group of friends, we get together, we pick a topic. This time the attackers pick the movies, so we don't have to pick a topic. And discuss films within that topic. Now, we're just friends hanging out, talking movies, so there's probably going to be spoilers. Just letting you know. But now, it is time to introduce you to the podcast crew. One of the many cool things he collects are rocks. He doesn't keep up with his collection very well. He often takes his collection for granite. Andy! <laughs> hey, yo. Thanks for listening, everybody. Aww. <laughs> when he started to grow his beard, he didn't like it at first, but then it started to grow on him. Tad! Hi. Thanks for listening. <laughs> he often lays awake at night wondering... When someone is driving Optimus Prime in vehicle mode, are they just giving him a hand job every time they shift gears? Jason! Come on, that's a kid's cartoon. I didn't say jerking off. Hey, you just... Hey, everybody, I'm so sorry about that. Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate you being here. Yes, so here we go. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Before we get going, I want to tell you guys about Shudder. Shudder is the Netflix for horror. No, no, no. Netflix has really gone downhill over the years. Let me try this again. Shudder is the crackle for horror. Oh, wait. No one watches crackle. Shudder is the Disney Plus for horror. No, that's too family friendly. Shudder is the Amazon Prime for horror. No, not that either. Shudder doesn't make you pay for the service and then still charge you to watch stuff. So. <laughs> Let's face it, nothing compares to Shudder. Nothing. Shudder is the premium streaming service for all things horror. If you still haven't signed up for Shudder, 
Attack of the Killer podcast can start you off right by giving you a month for free. If you enter our promo code AOTKP, you can get a whole month of Shudder for free. Once you do, you will want Shudder forever. Again, that promo code is AOTKP. <laughs> All other streaming services can suck it. Oh, my. Speaking of suck it, here's <laughs> Tad with what we watched. <laughs> So I guess for that, I'm just going to go straight to you, Mike. What have you watched? (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, buddy. I love you. Um, Well, I saw the Batman finally. Hooray! Where did you see him? Uh, Gotham City, hanging off of buildings and stuff. No, it was a good movie. I I really liked it. Um, Here's... Here's my Here's thing. Here's the thing. There's Here's no thing. the sun. There's no thing. Can we just make this the Batman episode? Oh, is this what it's going to be? Bonus episode. I love it. Me we should have. Oh. <laughs> um, I loved him as Batman. Fuck yeah. I thought he was great as Batman. Didn't really care for his the Bruce best Wayne. one. Easy. I didn't care for his Bruce Wayne, and I'll tell you both, why. Both Bruce Wayne scenes he's in. Yeah, he's barely Bruce and, Wayne. And that's great, too. Like, yeah, yeah. It's a Batman movie that's nobody Batman. Cares about, yeah. Yeah. You know, so, so much in the costume. And I love how, you know, Batman, I feel like, has gotten to the point where he's, like, the only superhero character in a movie that will con- will keep his mask on for the whole fucking movie. Not even Spider-Man will keep his mask on through the whole whole movie. But well, anyway. Here's Andy so we can talk spoilers. Well, I, I just want to say one thing. It, there's one speech in there which I think was by the ba- main bad guy. I'll just say that. That has I is is a speech that I've been wanting to hear in a Batman movie since the beginning of Batman movies, and it's how my it, it's always been my interpretation of the character, and this is why I didn't like his Bruce Wayne because you talked about how then the in this random speech it talked about how the Batman is the real person and Bruce Wayne is the is the mask, which is how I've always thought of of Batman being. But in this movie, there's really, to me, there's no distinction between Bruce Wayne and Batman in this movie. Both kind of play, are played the same. So that's why I didn't really care for his Bruce Wayne. But other than that, I thought it was awesome. And, you know, and Jason, you and I should probably talk about this more (laughs) after the show. Because, again, trying to avoid spoilers for Andy. But I just want to say one more thing that I really, really loved about the movie. And an afterthought after watching it. Is I love, and I, I'm assuming this was intentional, but I love their interpretation, their modernized interpretation of the villain henchman. Hmm. Anyway, that's all I have to say. But I want to tell you the movie, though, I want to talk about more than Batman um, of this movie. I freaking loved it. I know it's really early in 2022, but. I'm already thinking this may be in my top 10 for 2022. It's called No Exit. Have you guys heard of this one or seen this one? Heard of it, but haven't seen it, I don't think. I really, really liked it. I'll give you a a quick summary here. During a blizzard, a small group of people have to wait out the storm and isolated highway rest stop in the mountains. Darby discovers a kidnapped child hidden in a van belonging to one of the people inside. So really cool, like who done it? A lot of great tension. Um, it's right in my wheelhouse of like single location, small cast. It was really really cool, and it also has Dennis Habert in it, the Allstate guy. You know, you're in good hands with Allstate. I love that guy. Ever since he played the president on Twenty Four, I will watch anything he's in. So That's he Serrano was in Major League. What's that? That's for bats. Keep bats warm. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, Major League. Um, I, so I love him, and so the fact that he was in it sold me on it too. But it's a really, really cool film. Um, it's definitely when we get to, you know, you guys marathoning stuff and for the 2022 list, and uh, you're looking for movies to watch. Try to remember this moment that I'm telling you. You guys need to watch. It's no a Hulu exit. original, I believe, right? Yeah, yeah, and. Uh, yeah, because I want to talk about it more, but you guys haven't seen it. So, 
<clears throat> last thing I'll bring up, um, and I'll make it quick because uh, you know it's it's just a, an older movie that I haven't watched in forever. But uh, you know, we we uh, found it at like Goodwill or somewhere here recently. Um, Blast from the Past on DVD from 1998. Um, <laughs> Brandon Fraser, fuck yeah, yeah, Christopher hell yeah. Walken. Yep, Christopher Walken, Alicia Silverstone, Sissy Spacek, Dave Foley is in it. I forgot he was in Fuck it. Yeah, he plays the stereotypical '90s gay best friend, and it also has a really, really baby faced Nathan Fillion in it too. It's like mm. one of got to be one of his first roles because he's he's a really small part in it. But it's directed by Hugh Wilson, and I've been kind of on a major Hugh Wilson kick because uh, he was one of the creators of WKRP in Cincinnati and been marathoning those shows over and over again. And I've listened to a podcast about, about each and every episode. So I've been kind of, um, really, and that's one of my favorite shows. Johnny Fever. Yep. And then, yeah. And that sadly happened. Uh, but you meet from Halloween too. Sorry to keep it. No, that's okay. (laughs) That's okay. Um, Uh, and Hugh Wilson also was the director of the first Police Academy movie movies, and I love the Police oh. Academy movies. So I've discovered that. that I'm a huge Hugh Wilson fan, apparently. But anyway, yeah, that's what I watched. All right, Andy, what have you watched? Um, I didn't watch um, pretty much no horror at all, but um, I did watch the first episode of Our Flag Means Death on HBO. It's a oh, nice comedy uh sh- um show about uh, a gang of pirates that are just aren't very good at being pirates and um yeah it's it's good starting out um there's you know a lot of physical comedy because they gotta be you know pirates and they accidentally kill like the leader of this british brigade and you know so now they're in, now they're kind of in deep shit so um and they've got prisoners now but yeah it's just you know, it's it's a really it's it's a pretty good, pretty funny show. The wife and I watched that. Um, I recommend that. It's on HBO. Um, I watched House of Gucci. Have you guys seen this yet? It looks cool. I started it. Um, it's <laughs> it's not bad. I mean, I I really kind of dig historical dramas anyway. You know, it doesn't al- always have to be all like you know mobsters or like Wolf of Wall Street or anything like that, but this is, um, very interesting, you know, and it takes place in, it starts out in the late seventies in Italy when, you know, Gucci actually ran Gucci. Um, I don't want to spoil anything for, um, anything for you guys, but I mean, the acting pedigree, and I'll just read it off here. We've got Lady Gaga, Adam Driver, Jared Leto, Jeremy Irons, and, um, Al Pacino and, it's it's actually really really good. I hadn't I didn't know this story going into it. I just bought it on the merit of just I know that it's based on a true story. It's historical, and you know everybody knows you know uh, what Gucci is. It's a clothing brand. But um, I was gonna talk a little bit more about it, but it, since Tad's watching it, I don't want to um, uh, talk you know give give away anything else. But just um, really really well cast um you know of course you know the clothing is gonna be you know very very (laughs) you know um jared jared leto's is um kind of hilarious in it because he plays a role that you don't really um it doesn't really paint him in like in a real positive light he's kind of an idiot in this movie to tell you the truth um but yeah um, and I didn't realize as, until I was watching it that Salma Hayek is actually in this as well. So, um, yeah, um, it's it's worth a watch. It's it's actually pretty good. Um, I finally sat down and for about four straight hours, and it took me about six hours to finish. But I mean, it is pretty good. I finally watched The Irishman. Yay! And I really enjoyed it as well. I didn't know. Uh, I knew you have a, a lot of time on your hands. They're both like three <laughs> hours long. <laughs> yeah. I'm, yeah. Um, I don't think House of Gucci was that long, was it? Two hours and 40 minutes. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So no wonder I only watched a few things. I guess the <laughs> uh, Irish man seemed, you know, seemed longer. I think it was like three, was it like three and a half? Yeah. Almost yeah, as long as the Batman. To... Come on. Yeah. 
Um, but of course, you know, you've got Scorsese at the helm and you've got like Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, Joe Pesci, you know, and it had Bar- Bobby uh, Carnival in there. Um, lots of, you know, other really, really good actors and actri- actresses. I mean, Jesse Plemons, I didn't think he was going to talk throughout the whole damn thing, but eventually he starts speaking. But, um, you know, Anna Paquin. Uh, yeah, just a, just a really good movie. And, it, you know, like I said, I enjoy historical dramas. This must have been my historical drama week, but um, recommend that. I got um, I watched that on uh, my I bought a Criterion uh, of The Irishman, which I think they need to make one for Goodfellas. Ask me. Oh yeah. Um, the next one I watched, um, I got this at Half Price Books, you know, maybe a couple of months back. And you can get it off of um Vinegar Syndrome's um web- website, but it's a comedy and it's kind of done in the Zucker Brothers style, but it's a lot more raunchy and it's made to look like it was shot on VHS back in nineteen ninety uh back in the late nineties. And it's called Donnie's Bar Mitzvah. And it's actually really, really funny. It's just like these people that are partying at this kid's bar mitzvah. And these, <laughs> I think you just really got to watch it because it's actually really raunchy. It's just like the, the adults are actually worse than the kids. Cause they just, they're basically saying that these, these adults, they throw these parties and, you know, they say it's for the kids, but it's just for them to just, you know, cut loose and just, you know, get into all sorts of trouble. Um, Danny Trejo's in it. Um, that was really the kind of the, the only name, but yeah, there's these kids and, you know, they're, they're getting drunk and, you know, they're trying to score and just, yeah, they had like these, I'll give one thing away. They had like these hats for Donnie, you know, and their baseball hats. And they were supposed to, you know, since he wants to get into like film and everything, they, uh, they had these sort of Oscar statues on them and they were, they were purple because he like, I guess that's the reason why the only color they could come in and the hats got melted. So every time, um, all the hats, they look like big floppy dildos. (laughs) <laughs> on top of the hats and these kids are running around wearing them and it's just it's so damn cheesy and it's in the movie's just really absurd but it's actually really kind of a lot of fun it's kind of like a little hidden comedy gem that i found it's called donnie's bar mitzvah um yeah that's pretty much all i wanted to talk about and I'm, i'll let tad pass it over to whoever's next jason what do you think of the batman dude the fucking Batman is amazing and awesome and I love it and it's five stars and it's the best thing I've seen all year and probably will ever see. I can't wait to go watch it again and I don't <laughs> even want to talk with you guys about it because you're not going to like it as much as I did so it won't be even fun to talk to you about it. So just know, <laughs> so just know that I love it a lot. We have and, to like it as much as you do for yes, us to be able to For me to want to talk about, about it. it with you, yeah. What the hell? But I liked it. That's Isn't not that good enough? enough. Oh no. man, you're getting more and more sensitive every day. What if I don't even have a frame of reference? Can I still talk to you? No. No, we're done here. Uh, no, you can talk to me, just not about the Batman. I'm just I I spent all I weekend putting up with Tad's it. shit messages about the Batman. Oh, so, there's okay. There's where the there's the real are. reason. This Tad's ruined Mine it for everybody. I was not that mean to it. I liked it too. Yeah. Well, <laughs> five stars. I loved it. It was incredible. I loved every single thing about it. It's amazing. What else did you watch, Jason? Uh, you guys watched with me this amazing little piece of cinema on a. On a Amazon watch party called oh, Sharks dude, of I the Corn. Right? I wished I could have forgot about I'm trying it. Trying so hard to put that <laughs> out of my brain. Anyway, one of the I sweet perks out, of being our friends as we do watch parties and Sharks of the Corn. Really glad I picked that one. I don't think Pure bringing regret. that up is is selling people on becoming an attacker. <laughs> Well, I was like, what's the shittiest thing on this whole streaming service? And I picked it. I just thought I just thought it you know, and and, and it did its job. We had a lot of fun riffing on it. So it was fun, yeah. Um I just I just did a thing last night and I was I'm like, I just was made a pizza and I'd had some a couple hours. I'm like, I'll just see what's on and I've been meaning to watch 
the 2010 and Nightmare on Elm Street again, and I just clicked on it and it just started playing like and I watched it. Glutton for punishment. Well, I haven't seen it since 2010, the first time it came out, and I know that I just blank it, didn't like it. And I'm like, I don't know necessarily. I couldn't remember why or what. So I'm like, I, I wanted to watch it again to give it a real, you know, just to give it a once over. And I think I've identified the things that I don't like about it. And I, and I, and I thought it was a lot better than I remembered it. The things that are good about it are were better than I remembered. Yeah. So I remember us sitting in the car in the driveway, <laughs> not even getting out to go inside, just sitting in the car in the driveway you know, talking about what we did not like about it after we saw it at the theater. Yeah. So yeah, I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Well, the, the main things this time, uh, I mean, yeah, it was last night. The thing I hate the most, uh, it, yeah, again, overall, not as bad as I remembered it. But the thing that I didn't like about this movie and all movies that do this, I just hate it. And it's just the maybe it's a personal thing. Obviously, people like doing it. But there's this editing maneuver where you speed up something really fast and put jolting music on it. And so like Freddy Krueger standing way over there and then sudden, <laughs> yeah. And then he's like right there in your face and it's like oh, yeah. 1 million percent just editing. You just sped it up. And like, I've always hated that in every movie that does it. It's just a, I just, it's Not, a cheap jump scare. It, it's just it is a cheap jump scare, and I will tell the filmmakers out there if you uh, think that that is a cool technique it's not. for like a supernatural kind of movement. The guy that is talking right now, one of the things that freaks him out the most is unnatural jerky movement <laughs> in like movies like The Ring and shit like that. So this is not that. This is the the shitty version of that. Yeah, and then uh, I forgot Rooney Mara was in this. She's yeah. fucking Nancy, man, and she's, she's awesome. She has to yeah. say about it. I could imagine, I guess, but so she's great. But uh, the other thing, and so I, I felt like they also, which it didn't bother me, but it's just like, so I thought that they just took um, all the all the dot points of the first film and then like the highlight dot points of some of the others and just threw them in a bag. And then each character got to draw out the thing that, how they die. So like they just switched it all around and, you know, they had all the same moments of a kid getting sliced in the bed and flies around the room. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the Katie Cassidy is good, easy on the eyes for sure. And, but the, they have the coming through the wall thing. It's over somebody else. Like yeah. they had all the beats that all the franchise had, but they just like jumbled it up and gave them all to different people. And it's like, and like copied uh, those moments and yet missed the mark on why they, those moments were so good in the first film. Right. So as it, it just, I just, it was hard to separate any original stuff with this one. Cause I just, I don't, I don't know. You're just like, they're, they didn't give me anything new because they just kept playing those same beats that we all knew and they just gave them to different people. So it didn't feel weird. And I, and, and so I really, I really, 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 really tried to like Jackie Earl Haley. I like him as an because actor. He's cool. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it was tough. I, I mean, it's just, it was so hard. Like I, I, I thought like, yeah, he just, I did my best to just be like, delete all Freddy Krueger from brain and let him do his own. What if he got to do it first? And this is his creepy burn up character. Mm. And, and for what he did was fine. He just, you know, he was never going to, he, he was never going to win this one. Right. Like he just, I felt bad for him too. I'm like, he's acting his ass off and probably having fun. I liked yeah. his little clickety fingers. He tried to do something, you know, and I don't know. And then he's like I four feet tall that, and I didn't help either, <laughs> but I thought that the nightmare sequences were, were really good, you know, between the yeah. diner and, you know, like when, Katie Cassidy's sitting in the classroom and then it just turns all really decrepit and, and looks you know, like it's been abandoned for like 40 years, you know, but yeah. I mean, I thought I like the movie the was well 
I sh- how do I say this it's, without it's it, shot you know, well? The yeah, it's it's great. well done, but it's it just the good. execution. Post effects were done well. Oh, uh, no, no because it shot well. Oh yeah, no, the CGI wasn't great too because that Freddy pushing through the wall, yeah, that over is, the bed, that was horrible. That was yeah, just right. awful. But or like the the jelly stairs scene turned out. That was pretty fucking cool. It was way cooler than that. Might be Nancy better stairs. than the original. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for real. The the Bisquick stairs. Yeah, yeah. I liked the actors in it. It had what's his name was the Kyle Gallner. Um, yeah. <laughs> Was I was thinking of Clancy Brown. Scream. Clancy Brown's in it, you know, like oh, that I voice. Clancy Brown was in it. Yeah. Mr. Krabs. <laughs> so, it, yeah. yeah, just the music uh, was I, I, I wasn't as good either. And it's not. I'm trying to. I forgot who did it. Oh, I forgot his name. It's hard to Steve, it's hard. Steve Jablonski. Yeah, but Jablonski did it, and he does yeah. great stuff. It's just yeah, Texas Chainsaw was really good. Yeah, and, uh, but you like from '03. But without that, but you got that original score that's just untouchable and not. I don't know. It's just that. tough. I have a couple questions for you since you okay. rewatched it, and your previous memory is my previous memory because we saw yeah. it at the theater at the same time as last time I've tried watching it. Um, <clears throat> so two things that st- stood out in my mind, you talked about not really oh. being into Jackie early Jack, him as Freddie. Um, uh-huh. <laughs> the things that stood out to me in my brain and trying to remember this experience was I thought when he was burned up Freddie, he wasn't bad because he wasn't, he didn't. He didn't talk much. He was just ominous, which is kind of what Freddy was in the first movie. But I think what ruined him as Freddy was all the was all the backstory stuff, all the flashbacks to before he was burned up. Because I just felt like it humanized him too much. Oh, I suppose, and they definitely played up the mm-hmm. child molester stuff more. And uh, it didn't bother me as much. The stuff that bothered me with him was that they were there was too much Freddy. Like they just okay. showed him. As really? Freddy, way too early, okay, and way too here I am, and I'm already talking to you. You know, there was no setup like the movie. Just you know, it's not that they relied on you to know, but like they certainly didn't set it up. They just here's this crazy thing, okay, and here's this guy who just keeps trying to talk to me and my dreams, and we're just all going with it. Just it yeah, okay. So yeah, accepting the premise too. I, I agree cast. that, you know, the, when you said like Freddy's all up in your face in the 2010 version, yeah, like if you, if you go back and watch the 84 <laughs> version, I mean, yeah, he's there, but he's got, he's, he almost seems more stealthy. He doesn't really reveal himself as much yeah. and, uh, up until up the end, it, of course. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was, uh, it was, um, I th- and I think that adds more to the creep factor when, you know somebody's there, but you don't know much about why or when or blah, blah, blah. And then my other thing was um, the only moment of the movie that stood out to me in my mind that I kind of sort of still remember because it was a moment I actually thought I liked because I thought it was something original that you had not seen in the series before. And that was the scene at the drugstore where whatever character, I can't remember who now, is keeps nodding off and every time they nod off freddie is that much closer you know coming towards that person and yeah yeah it it, was that still kind of cool or am i projecting no no it it was cool i just I, i just that is that is a moment like you talked about how there's just so much just copying from this franchise to put into this new movie and that is the one thing i remember at the time distinctly Oh, that is something I've never seen in a nightmare before, and I thought it makes sense. They, for, they foreshadow that when they're studying it at the library. You know, it's like if you, you know, we can only stay awake for so long until we actually, until our brain just basically tells us to shut off. Mm-hmm. And then, lastly, uh, right before I went to bed, I watched this awesome new movie on Netflix, I believe, called The Adam Project. Oh, that's on my to-do list, yeah. With Ryan Reynolds, uh, Mark Ruffalo, Jennifer Gardner, Zoe, Zoe Saldana, Catherine Keener. It um it was it was fucking amazing. It was awesome and um yeah, I have a giant, you know, man crush 
on Ryan Reynolds, and he's hilarious as always. It's it's full of his humor. Awesome. Um, th- there's a, I don't know if any of you seen the trailer or not, but there's a he goes back in time, and it, the boy in it is himself, and the boy's just hilarious as shit too, and um. Yeah, it was uh, really great. Um, definitely, I think it says it in the trailer, but you know, it's a movie that Spielberg would be proud of. It just has the uh, an amazing, great sci fi ness, but also amazing heart. And I didn't cry a lot throughout the whole movie, <laughs> <laughs> but it was action packed and super fun and just heartwarming and just great. And I loved it. The Adam Project, definitely recommend it. That's what I watched. Hey, Tad, what'd you watch? I watched a whole lot of non-horror stuff that I won't go over. It's all the uh, Oscar stuff that our listeners could give a fuck less about. So, <laughs> um, I watched one movie for a podcast that has yet to happen, so I'm calling out Colby Keefe on that one. Um, I wasted an hour and a half watching Instant in a Ghost Land from 2018. Uh, I might as well talk about it here because I can't depend on him to come on my show and talk about it. Um Basically, <laughs> shots shots fired. <laughs> oh, he won't listen to this either, so it's okay. Oh. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> and he could he could totally destroy me and kick my ass, but um, he knows I'm just giving him a hard time. Uh, or sort of a cool little horror movie. Um, I won't let too much be known about it because I, I probably, hopefully, maybe will record a podcast with Colby down the road about it. But it's about these two girls and their mom who move into their deceased aunt's house in a small town and um when they get there that it's like an old creepy house filled with all kinds of dolls and this ice cream truck follows them to the house and this big creepy ogre guy and this woman go inside and they um have they viciously attack them like a home invasion type thing and then uh some other shit happens. I won't spoil after what happens there because that's just the beginning of the movie. But there's lots of um, twists and turns in this one. Um, but it's on Shutter and I believe Netflix also. Um, incidents in a Ghostland are also known just as Ghostland. Um, it's all the Batman. Um, I I enjoyed it. I thought it was a little long, but I did enjoy it. Jason, I'm just um, being quiet. As someone as someone who has not, I will say this very clearly and loudly for anyone, including Mike, um, I have not read Batman comics. I don't think I've ever read a Batman comic, so I thought it was a bit weird to watch Batman stand around in like an uncomfortable bat suit, like doing detective work. <laughs> right? Like, reading, Wasn't that awesome? Reading things. I'm like, why does he he's he does he barely fights crime in this, he just does a lot of reading and talking. And I'm like, why doesn't he just join the police force at this point? He's not. Why is he wearing the bat suit? Like that has to be uncomfortable to stand there for four hours reading ransom notes or whatever. But um, it, it just, see, this is what it, I'm it, talking it, about. Well, no, it was awkward because he's standing there a bu- with a bunch of cops who are in like police uniforms, and he's wearing this like children's bat suit thing. It's you know, his thinking cap. It's just weird. Oh. It's like I, I, you've been in a situation where like you're wearing a costume at to like a Halloween party and no one else wore a costume. And you're like, Oh fuck. Like I thought everyone was going to wear a costume. And then you're standing around like trying to have a serious conversation, but you're in like, you know, like a skin tight costume or something. It's just, just like, I, I felt uncomfortable for Batman. Like, <laughs> can you go home and put on some jeans while he does the detective work? You know, he can keep the like upper the, the cowl on. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Batman, three hours long. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> they used the two chords from uh, Nirvana, something in a way, and made it a three-hour score, which is sort of cool. Uh, yeah, my son figured that out. Yeah. Like, I didn't. It's like droning in your head. Dun, like, dun. Like, I, I was like, he's like, did you know that was a Nirvana song? I'm like, no. How did you know it was a Nirvana song? <laughs> Well, the director was saying like he envisioned his Batman as a as a Kurt Cobain type character that like was famous but tortured, you know, and didn't and want the fame. Strung out on heroin. No, it, oh, I think uh, I think my wife wanted to pull a Kurt Cobain by the end of this movie, but uh, oh <laughs> come on, she Ouch. she was literally had her she was in her hoodie because she was trying to sleep by like the. Out first first hour, she was just bored out of her mind. But um, 
I enjoyed it. Whatever. Um, let's see what else I watched. I'm looking on my uh, letterboxed uh, stuff that might interest our listeners. Not a whole lot. I watched. Uh, let's see. Uh, um, Dune last night, Yay. another th- three-hour movie mm. where nothing happened. Um, <laughs> just kidding. It was very pretty. It was very long. Um, it was yep. like, you know, when I start walking in a desert, I'm like, what is this? Like sand Lord of the Rings? Jesus Christ, guys, get to where you're going. And this is part one. God, all these Oscar movies are at least Yeesh. two and a half hours long. <laughs> like, can anybody just make a 90 minute movie anymore, please? What Oscar uh, was Dune nominated for? It's like uh, up for everything. Best picture, yeah. directing, cinematography, really? editing, sound, score. <laughs> That's um, pretty good. I mean, they could probably put it under animation, documentary, whatever. Mike, you um, won't like it. But. Oh, probably not. But, you know, I'm just not a fan of the Dune stuff anyway. So. Yeah, I was like, this is like Star Wars if it wasn't fun. Um, <laughs> Man, all these funny takes tonight. I, I, uh, I watched Coda. That was one I thought was actually pretty good. Probably one of my favorites of the Oscar movies because it was sort of, I mean, I didn't love it. It's very cheesy and predictable, but at least it was watchable and it was under three hours. Uh, It's about like a girl who is obsessed with music, but she has two deaf parents and a deaf brother. So uh, trying to navigate through life where your family has no understanding of your passion because they literally can't fucking hear is very interesting dynamic. Um, Hmm. West Side Story, another three-hour remake of a movie I didn't like in the first place. Thanks, Steven Spielberg. Um, <laughs> Spencer, a real drag watching uh, Princess Diana live. I, I don't know. Um, the, the Replacements, I watched that. That was fun. A football like movie movies? with Keanu. I don't know that he does this week. I thought he wasn't going to go into all these movies that, he, not, that their th- listeners th- no, didn't care about. <laughs> no, no. I'm telling you, dude. I'm doing an Oscar episode later this week. This is two of the 40 fucking movies I've had to watch, so... Uh, I'm doing you a favor oh, by not listing the bad ones. Um, not listing the bad ones? The ones I, the bad. You guys want to hear about Belfast or The Lost Daughter no. or King Richard or Power of the Dog or Luca or The Eyes of Tammy Faye or Tick, Tick, Boom? I mean, I can keep going, but um, yeah, that's what I watched. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, thank you, Ted. Thanks. <laughs> Ah, yeah. (laughs) Movies. Yeah. Hey, do you know what time it is? What time is it? It's tweeting time. Here's Jason with Pole Position. From now on, like your parents were, you are the secret force of Pole Position. Did I I scare you? You jumped a little. No, I was just getting ready. Oh, okay. Uh, To tell you about... The last episode's pole position and the sweet results that just I just saw before we started recording is pretty amazing. We're laughing, so I'm nervous. I was. So we're going back to two episode 255, and the question is, what is the scariest inanimate object in a horror film? And you remember your answers? That's okay. I'll tell you. Insane Mike said the clown doll from Poltergeist. Yep, and number one. Mannequin's uh, Taurus Trap. That was number his two. twofer. Uh, I picked the Goblin Truck from Maximum Overdrive and the Doll from Annabelle. Ted picked the Car from Christine and the Deer Head from Evil Dead 2. I should have voted for Ted. And Andy, oh, Andy, uh, picked uh, the Puzzle Box from Hellraiser and the Sentinel Ball Phantasm. Well, three-way tie. Ooh, wow. 30%, 30%, 30%. And the guy with 10%. The losers, the only one who didn't win today is Insane Mike. The fuck? <laughs> look, look at that. Everybody won, and then you got nothing over there. That, that's bullshit. The ghost for Poltergeist, or the clown, fuck it, whatever. You don't even know what you picked. So. <laughs> yeah. The freaking clown must, for Poltergeist, come on. Maybe you shouldn't have went so obscure with Tourist Trap, even though it's great. Oh, good job. What's, what's Poltergeist? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Done with the shit. Ugh. Yep, that was a close one. Almost got it, Mike. I think people Almost. are not voting for me just to get my reactions <laughs> on the goddamn. Oh, show. now you're just turning in. Uh, you they know I was right. Uh huh. Right. All right, so let's get ready for this week's uh, poll position. Um, the question is: What is the best horror 
movie on a lake. Let's go to the random number generator or sequence generator. Uh, Mike's one, I'm two, Tad's three, Andy's four. Here we go. Oh, who? Oh, man. All right. So Andy's got the first and the eighth pick. Uh, Mike has the second and seventh pick. Doesn't matter. Jason's got the third pick and the sixth pick. And Tad's on the turn. Fourth and five. Just call me a turd. <laughs> on the turn. All right, Andy, you're up first. First pick. Well, um, come on, man. I'm going with the obvious one here. I'm going with Friday the 13th. Oh, man, you would. On my list. Yeah, it's up there. That's Luckily, pretty good. There's 10 of them, 12 of them, whatever. So. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I know. I All eight picks are just Friday the 13th. <laughs> one, two, three. <laughs> All right, Mike, you're up next. Okay, well, I know what he's got already. Come on, God let's let's build it I up. Think, what do you yeah. what? lead what? into it? What? I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with Creep Show Two. Whoa, the raft. Oh, I'm glad you're not wasting good picks to lose. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> oh, it wasn't even on my list. Nope, mine either. Oh, that's perfect. That's that was on my list, but uh, who doesn't love the raft? I know. Oh, come on. Crap. What do I pick now? Oh, there's so many good ones. Um. Oh shit. Okay, I'm gonna go with a movie that's pretty <laughs> awesome, <laughs> and it has a leak in it. I'm going to go with The Burning. Oh, I just wanted to take that Tad's is, pick. That's all I, it's my only motivation. I wanted to drag ever. it out like a real dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Tad, what do you got? Nothing now. Um, <laughs> I will say I get two, right? You got two in a row. Okay. I'll go with Piranha, oh, the original Piranha. Yeah. Good oh, one. Uh, and Kirk. Creature from the Black Lagoon. Ooh, oh. not on my list. Is it Lagoon good. Lake? Let's uh, uh, judges. Wasn't it on a river? I don't have a lagoon. Oh my god! That'll be up to the tweeters. I guess yeah, so. Exactly. I guess so. All right, I'm back on the clock. Okay, Piranha's got. Oh, I only had one more, so it wasn't. Uh, got so many good ones. Um, I'm gonna go because I just. Uh, I have other, okay. I love this movie a lot, a lot because, um, it has a giant gator in it. Plus Betty White is the sweetest and awesomest person ever. And she's the only one left on my list. So good in Lake Placid. Oh, could you be any more obvious? Lake's in the title. I know it. All right, Mike, you're up. Pick seven. I'm going to go with last house on the left. Whoa. Hmm. Way to just tank your whole thing. What that's the good. fuck? That's good. Nope. No, that's good. Last pick on the Twitter, you mean? Yep. And Andy, <laughs> finish it up. What do you got? Well, um, I'm going to go with a little bit of comedy on this one. I'm going to go with Tucker yep. and Dale versus Evil. That also yep. just was wow. It was on the list. It was hard to... Yeah, that's pretty good. Any... uh. Honorable mentions. I thought about Tucker and Dale, but I was really trying to go for movies where the lake either played a more important role mm -hmm. into the horror of it all, you know? Sure. So when you got like Friday the 13th, that's like the scariest moment of the whole movie is when Pamela po or uh, Jason pops out of the, the lake at Sounds the very nice. end. Um, yeah. But I also had on my list... Uh, well, besides Friday Thirteenth Part Two, Part Three, Part Four, yes. Part Seven, um, I also had Sleepaway Camp. Yep, yep, yeah. And then a couple of obscure ones because I had a brain fart, so I put Let's Scare Jessica to Death and Zombie Lake. Oh yeah, I had ones I wasn't sure. <laughs> trick or treat, trick or treat. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. it wasn't. You know, there's so many good stories in there. Well, it's the same thing with Creep Show or another too. or. Or there was the movie Creep. Uh, I was on a list too, but I couldn't even remember the damn lake part of that movie. Hmm. Anybody else? Any honorable mentions? April Fool's Day. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. And that plays a kind of pivotal part because they're trapped on that 
Temple Island. All right, guys. That was good. Mm -hmm. Well, everyone listening, get your butts over to Twitter. Get your votes in on the poll position. Who do you think picked the best horror movies on a lake? That is poll position. All right. So it's time to get into some movie discussion here. Let's find out what, uh, what our Patreon, our attackers, what they picked for this episode. <clears throat> um, Tad, why don't you start us off? Our first movie, we're going way back to 1964. It is The Night Walker. These everyday people are about to relive their dreams under hypnosis. They are not actors. Listen. All of a sudden, we walk into a room. I turn around, there's no doors. There's no windows, and I have to go home. As I go to kiss her, it seems as though we're surrounded by mosquitoes. Only he's not wearing any clothes. Charlie! Charlie, watch the bayonet! Watch the bayonet! What are dreams? What do they mean? When you dream, you wander into another world where everything is strange and terrifying. When you dream, you become a night walker. <laughs> Now, a warning from William Castle, producer of The Night Walker. Do you know that a dream can kill you? Gruesome thought, isn't it? Do you hear that? It's the scream of a woman having a nightmare. I love you so much. That is the voice of a woman asleep, dreaming. Does her lover exist? Is he real or is he only a dream lover? This can happen to you, too. I know why my dreams seem real. Because when I'm awake, my life with you is like a nightmare. My lover is only a dream, but he's still more of a man than you. be too much for you. Okay, the Night Walker. A woman is haunted by nightly dreams of an imaginary lover, and after her husband dies, she is helped by a scheming lawyer to unravel the mystery in her subconscious. Um, as you've heard in the trailer, this one has William Cat. This is a William Castle film. Um, has Robert Taylor, Taylor, Barbara Stanwyck. This movie ruled. I love this movie. Yes. Yeah. Uh, this mm -hmm. is so cool. Uh, the the beginning, that intro, like the first five minutes, is just cool on its own. Like this oh, is something yeah. that could have been that, the whole movie. Oh yeah, it's yeah. just fucking like it, it makes me think of something like Rob Zombie would like put on the screens behind him as he, he probably does. But at the same uh, time, I'm like, that's William Castle stretching this fucker oh, out. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. Totally. Oh, like, yeah. It's pad, <laughs> so cool. padding, but yeah. it's still cool. It was cool though. Yeah. It's cooler yeah. than two wig box. Absolutely. Talking and gruesome <laughs> Absolutely. Like sets the uh, tone for it. Yeah. It really ends up not having much to do with the film, no. but it's sort of, you know, we're used to that with William Castle. Yeah. And um, overall the, the look of the film, like the look of the, the blind guy was creepy as hell. Um, yeah. Yep. The story was really cool. I mean, it's, it's sort of predictable who done it type thing in the end, but uh, yeah, mixing, totally. like dreams with reality. Um, mm -hmm. I, I loved the score. I loved, uh, yeah, everything music about was really it, man. Good. Yeah. Music was cool. Repetitive, uh, but it, well, it had, but, uh, yeah, but it was, but you didn't mind. You no. didn't mind it being repetitive. At least I didn't. And it was I will unique say this, too for a horror film. Even I could not get. Era. I couldn't get out of my mind that it's the Home Depot theme. <laughs> dun, 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 you would, um, but yeah, I love this one, man. I, I imagine you guys had to have loved it too. I mean, this is fun. I did love it, and that score it was done by um, Vic. Um, 
uh, Muzzy, who did the Adams Family theme song. Mm, makes sense. So yeah, you can kind of you can kind of hear the connection when you when you know that fact. But yes, I really really liked it. This is the original Nightmare on Elm Street. If Freddy Krueger was Don Juan, <laughs> right? Um, <clears throat> yeah, and it, it, it is so William Castle. And I was I tried looking to get some more factoids. I could not find if this movie had a William Castle gimmick or not because it's from that. I was era. curious about that. Yeah, when you I, go in, they explode. They fake explode the uh, theater. That would be cool. <laughs> um, yeah, there was a lot of really cool mannequins in the aisles. You know? Yeah, yeah, there was a lot of creepy, cool imagery, like the mannequins in the wedding scene. I thought were creepy. Yes, the the blind husband was creepy looking before he was burnt up, and then like, oh yeah, even creepier when he was a ghost or whatever. Um, yeah. So it it was really cool. And yes, I like the, you know, again, it's like, it feels like William Castle really deals with some, some before it's before his, before their time kind of, uh, supernatural elements in his movies. Um, you know, it's it's definitely outside the box thinking, thinking, but just kind of like with like house on haunted Hill, he, he'll take these supernatural, these out, this supernatural concept, this outrageous supernatural concept, and then tried to bring it back and ground it in reality, like a Scooby Doo ending yeah. where, where the, the supernatural element wasn't a real thing. There was a, there was a evil person, man, there was an evil man There's or whoever behind explanation. it. Yeah. But, but it's even more fictitious because the elements of setting up the re, you know setting up this elaborate scheme was way too elaborate just like in house on haunted <laughs> hill like you know uh, putting a skeleton on wires uh, above a acid bath you know so yeah and i that's a common theme in william castle movies which i love i love um this was definitely a blind spot also i had not seen this one before uh from william I've never castle heard of it. yeah it, it's one um, when I was definitely going through a, a a deep dive into William Castle, this is one that uh, I saw on the list, and the, I always thought the poster was freaking cool looking. That like gargoyle demon thing, kind of hunched over the woman, um, which has nothing to do with the movie. Uh, so, and this uh, uh, Rome, Roman was the one that suggested this one, Our correct? Roman, yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I want to thank him for suggesting this. And yeah, getting absolutely. Me- to check this off of my William Castle list. Um, I've just never been able to find it before, so I'm glad we we got to check this one out. Roman says, I'm, I'm, this is a personal message. I don't care. Hopefully he's not mad. I wrote, read this, what he said. Uh, he said, um, not your typical William Castle, um, but it scared me for days when I saw it on TV when I was probably 10 years old. Mm-hmm. The music is so chilling, and the sound of his cane tapping on the floor gave me goosebumps. Oh, yeah, that was a cool effect. That- Tapping. I I saw a lot of similarities between this and um, House on Haunted Hill too, particularly like in the, in the beginning where they kind of give you the whole rundown of as to what you're about to you know experience and uh, of course you know similarities between you know the blind man and the blind woman in uh, House yes. on Haunted Hill. Yeah, you know that seems to be like a, you know a theme, and of course you know all the double crossing, you know, between, you know, the bad guys in this film who have set up this elaborate hoax, you know, between, you know, the dreams and, you know, you've got a lot of double crossing going on in between, you know, house and haunted Hill with, you know, the wife trying to kill her husband and all this and that. But, um, I also noted that noticed that the, the blind, uh, jealous husband also has a, Dr. Emmett Brown collection of clocks hanging on his wall as well, <laughs> that which which I thought was interesting. I mean, but how does he know if they're all in sequence? But um, yeah, I'm 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 with you guys on this a hundred percent. I just I like the music, I like the story, and it's like um, it's like Mike said, it was it was the first you know real sort of. Horror story that involved, you know, ni- you know, nightmares that specifically focused on the theme of nightmares. At least, the, as far as I can tell. I mean, it, it it may go back further, but this is one of the earlier ones. Guys, forgive me. Please don't be mad, and please don't take away my horror card. But I think I I liked. I think I liked this one more because it was 
less gimmicky than William Castle stuff. It made me like it more. It just seemed like just more of a straight, you know, mystery murder type of movie. And I felt it was stronger because of it not having the gimmicky shit. Now I'm not saying that it doesn't have its place and I don't love it, but I don't know. I was like, I was, I was like, go William Castle. This is, this is good. Mm-hmm. Well, it doesn't mean you take away your horror card. I get that, you know. Um, I'm just a sucker for the William Castle gimmicks. You know, but I don't disagree. This is probably my favorite William Castle movie I've seen. Nice. Yeah, that's nice. what I would have said. I loved it. And, I, and I'll say this. Um, maybe it added to it, but it's a, it's a testament to the movie itself that um, I think it was like Friday night. I was up and it was like 1 a.m. or something something or maybe even 2 a.m. And I'm like, I definitely should not be starting a movie right now, but I <laughs> a black not, and white I, film from 64. Right. I'm right. not feeling that tired. Nikki fell asleep on the couch. I throw it on. And of course there's all the screaming and shit and she slept right through it. But I'm like, <laughs> I, I was, I, I like, you know, I, I sort of have like a system where I'm like, how, how often do I check my phone or do I find myself on my phone while I watch a movie? And this yeah. one I did not. And it was that late in the night again, maybe it was, sort of like a dreamlike movie, you know, and sure. deals with uh, mm-hmm. her sleeping stuff. But it was like, if this can keep my attention, and again, it's not a three-hour movie, but um, yeah, sort of a testament to the film itself that I could stay awake that late and it could hold my attention and didn't fall asleep to it. So uh, right on. Thank you, Roman. This was awesome. Yeah, yes. I loved it. Absolutely. Great. That's very, very cool. Okay, so Andy, what's next? Okay, our next film takes us to the year 2000, and it is called The St. Francisville Experiment. 1832, New Orleans. Fire breaks out. The firemen on the scene make a grim discovery. The bodies of slaves and chains and cages. Tortured, mutilated, and maimed. St. Francisville Mansion saves all day by their spirits to this day. Four real people. <laughs> the actual St. Francisville house. It's cold up here. It's cold. They don't know they're dead. I do not want this door to shut. One documented night. I don't want to go last. Now, fear doesn't follow a script. What's going on? Get out of the house right now! The St. Francisville Experiment. God help us. You won't have to ask. Four young people spend a night in a haunted mansion, supposedly haunted by the ghost of a woman by the name of Madame Laramie, I believe is what her name was. Pretty close. Um, Yeah, sorry, I'm I'm just reading off of IMDb, and it's not giving me much, but... um, uh, these four young people, they're assigned to basically be ghost hunters and film, you know, their experiments in this mansion where this supposedly really, really awful woman who tortured slave in Louisiana, where she took refuge after the fire. Um, I want to start off by saying I actually had this on VHS and it's, and it was sealed and much like Pandora's box, it should have never been opened, and I'm glad <laughs> that it was sealed Aww. because I am not a fan of this movie. I'm not. It's it's shot on video, and it's basically from what, as far as I can tell, it's trying to capitalize on the Blair Witch um, phenomenon. Um, one of them is these girls is supposedly a psychic, and the other one is just a history student and they all have, you know, their, their quirks and everything. But basically all I saw was, it was like a bunch of old ladies at a lady aid meeting bitching at each other. And it took 45 minutes into the film 
to see a chair fly across the room. And that's basically all I got. I mean, the location, it was cool. But, and the story, you know, it provided a lot of sizzle, but we didn't get any steak as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> um, it's, I'm hungry now. I mean, the, the acting, not good. Um, the only thing that actually kept me moderately entertained was the guy doing the, um, he was, he was behind the camera and he was saying, I love, we love all ghosts. I love all ghosts, <laughs> which I thought, which, which I kind of thought was funny, but, um, yeah, this, oh man, it's the only, I, I, I try to say one good thing about a film and then I can say that the location was, was cool. The house, the house was neat. Um, like the sort of somewhat hidden tunnel at the end that I believe, what is it? Uh, can't remember. Was it, was it? I can't remember the guy's name that, that found it. I guess it doesn't matter. I don't care, but um, yeah, not, not a fan of this one. And I just, you know, like I said, it took 45 minutes of them pissing and moaning at each other to see a chair fly across the room. So, I mean, I can't really talk much about this movie because you didn't see shit. It was just them bickering. What did you guys think? Because I don't want to talk about this anymore. <laughs> Don't all talk over. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, Brandy. Yeah. Um, I wasn't in love with this one either. At least it was short. Well, um, <laughs> well like yeah. Andy said, he tried to find the good in the movie and it eventually ended. Um, I don't know. It was. Yeah. Uh, obviously, it's clear what they're going for. You know, they was, even say it in. They mention Blair Witch in the movie. Yeah. I mean, it was, uh, you know, early found footage and. Um, it's interesting because like Andy says, you know, the acting was bad and people might say, well, it's supposed to be like, you know, found footage. Well, you have to convince me that it's found footage and not a bunch of bad actors pretending. And it felt like bad actors pretending. Oh, um, the so Madison was the worst. I'm sorry, it's not, I'm sorry. It's not so much that it, um, was like badly made. Cause I mean, that's what it's supposed to, it's supposed to, supposed yeah. to feel real and it didn't feel real to me. So, um, I don't know. Yeah. I, I didn't love it. I, I, I didn't hate it. I mean, I've, I've, yeah, spent I've seen, worse I've seen worse. Yeah, absolutely. Seen worse. I've seen worse in the last two episodes on this show. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's, it's just, uh, it, it was, it, it had a tough, uh, Going up against two other ones that I really liked, so it's uh, yeah. it's got it. There's always got to be a worst of the episode. So if Tad said what he said about all these Oscar nominated films. He definitely isn't <laughs> liking this one. <laughs> I feel like I was a little biased right from the get go when I saw it was Ted Nicolau, and I was like, oh, as in like, as in not good from what? No, not a what's wrong with Ted Nicolau. Anyway, I was curious. Oh, I was like, uh, "What? Do you have any insight from Brandy? Like, she obviously loves this movie. Yeah, she does. Because I checked her letterbox, and she had way too many stars on it. She did. I should have had her <laughs> say something about it. I should have had her. Why? Um, I was like, "Does she know somebody in it? Why? What is? What could possibly make her like this so much?" Okay, so here's. Oh, the thing. we love you, Brandy, but I'm yeah. sorry. Ugh. Okay, here's the thing. Yeah. First of all, I like this movie. Just you have to say that. I know that. I we don't like have it. to say no. anything. <laughs> It's okay, man. We're all, we've, we're, we all know. We all know. <laughs> so I've had... I know a, your couch is uncomfortable. I've, <laughs> <laughs> um, I've had a on-again, <laughs> off-again love relationship with found footage. Sure, yeah. Um, when found footage began, before it really began, I was a big fan because it was unique and new and different and interesting way of telling the stories. <laughs> Um, and then I quickly began to hate it when it felt like it was being overdone and people were, you know, filmmakers were using it as a crutch because it's the, it's, that was the thing to do, but then had a realization that, um, I'm sitting here saying I hate found footage, but every time I talk, every time I think about a found footage movie I watched, I like, and so I realized that I really do love the genre of found footage. So you're a glutton for punishment. I I, I love it. There's not a lot of that. There are some of them it's that cool are technique. that are super super bad. Yeah. And there's a lot of interesting, a lot of interesting films. Especially what, what's cool about this particular genre is that 
anybody can kind of do it. And so it's a there's, bad thing too. So not, well, it can be. Yes, it can it, be. Because these guys did it. But there are a lot of diamonds in the rough of just completely unknown films and filmmakers that have made some great stuff. And we're talking we're talking not just unknown filmmakers, but also like top tier filmmakers. You know, you, Rennie Harlan's made a, uh, a found footage movie. Um, the Bay. Who? What? What director made mm -hmm. The Bay? That movie rules. That movie does rule. A lot of people Real. um have, Adam have Green, Adam Green, Adam Wingard. Yes. See, so so suck it. There's a lot of found footage <laughs> of out there, um, and so she is also a huge found footage fan, and she uh -huh. has taken me down the rabbit hole um, of some really obscure stuff because we'll just we'll just we'll just surf for found footage like on Tubi. You can actually search under the category of found footage, which is really cool. And we've watched some really interesting stuff. We watched we've watched some shit, but. Uh, um, we've watched some really interesting stuff. Now, this is early in the found footage, yeah, you know, thing. This this obviously came off of the heels of Blair Witch Project. You know, no no bones about it. Um, I feel like it has no ghosts about it either. Hey, Jesus Christ. when that chair I, moved, I it was scared me. It was good. What happens to Paranormal Activity? Just about the same amount of stuff. And I hate that too. Oh, okay. never seen. All right, fine. Never seen it. No, I'm I don't fine. want to. <laughs> I'm fine. Fine. Um. <laughs> Anyway, it's early in the found footage subgenre, and so I give it a bit of a hall pass because of that. Um, uh, but there's definitely there's definitely some flaws that I that stand out to me with this movie as well. Um, and I think just based because basically because um, it hasn't become formulaic enough yet to where people knew how to make them the right way. I guess, but you know, things, the things that bothered me, it wasn't we really even the characters. I, you know, I was fine with whatever they were doing. Sure. Um, uh, it was some of the camera angles that just literally yeah. did not make any sense. It was like, there is not a cameraman standing there <laughs> for this camera angle to happen. What, right out of the gate, when they show up at the house and they're all on the porch, the cameraman is in the shot. So what, who's filming? Who's filming this right now? Anyway, um, I like Ted Nicola. Thank you, TerraVision subspecies. Okay, go ahead and name a good one. What? What's wrong with TerraVision? Well, nothing. That movie's pretty fun. Okay, thank you. Um, I think one of the reasons why she likes this is because she is a big, um, she's a big fan of the paranormal and and sure. cryptids and all that kind of stuff. And, and that's fair, but uh, and. And, and this is kind of sort of, as far as I remember in her talking about this movie, and again, I should have taken, I should have had her explain it to me again and take some notes. My memory shit. But I believe this is based on a real, a real thing down in, um, down there in Louisiana. And it was actually filmed oh. in Louisiana at one of those mansions, one of those plantation one of mansions. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's cool, um, and the fact that it is based on on a real event, and I think if I remember right, one of her favorite um, of of the uh, real ghost story stuff, uh, if I remember right as well. Pretty sure I'm getting that right. I'm pretty sure I'll hear about it later if I'm wrong. It just but. it just drove me nuts because we had to wait eight straight minutes for that asshole to go to get up the stairs to go up to the attic. I'm just like, either go up to the, I mean, if I was there, I'd be like, get in that room or I'm throwing you down the fucking stairs. <laughs> okay. the I was just suspense, getting pissed. Bro. Just, oh, fuck, man. I can, uh, no, I, I will say, I mean, I understand not liking this movie. I, like, it, it does have some flaws, but I still, I still found it enjoyable. And I thought the, the final thing was a good, was a good payoff. The final little end credits, scare yes. moment. <laughs> oh my god. When it actually just... when it actually became a horror movie, you mean? For the 30 seconds that was left. I've seen dozens of movies that are like that where it just holds on to nothing till the very end. Yeah, but I don't want to see anything like that. I want to I want something to happen. I just know I I failed Tad's phone test on this one. What was that? I just Went to my phone too many times. I'm just like, ah, this movie. Like, if you ask me right now what this movie's about, it's just, I would say, uh, my uh, description of this movie would be a 
bunch of kids uh, check the temperature uh, in rooms in a house, <laughs> and then a chair moves. That's all I remember. Uh, I don't. That's just it's a whole yeah. movie of checking temperatures, and then so yeah. unfair. Maybe. The best, the best part was the, <laughs> I think the the black uh, caretaker telling the backstory. Of oh yeah, the, the yeah. campfire story. That's the best part of this movie, and I could turn it off there. I'd be like, oh, cool, good story, cool story, bro. And I definitely Done. didn't. I didn't have a big problem with the acting. I mean, as as, as Andy did, but you know, it made it feel. Well, it, it's like I say, bad acting like real is subjective. Pe- yeah. so. That Madison chick made Tara Reed seem like Meryl Streep. That, I'm sorry. That is the meanest thing you've ever said. <laughs> <laughs> Just because I know that I hate Tara Reed as much as I do. Like, that's not, Madison's not that bad. Come on. <laughs> sorry, Brandy. Yeah, sorry, Brandy. I feel like I, feel like I pushed her into this because. Yeah. <laughs> Quick, pick something. Well, well, there's that. Yeah, I'm like, pick something, and then, and then she just, she wouldn't let go that you put the kibosh on microwave massacre. And I told her, I'm like, we've already done it on the show. We need something different. Yeah. And she, oh, I'd so, rather watch this than microwave massacre. Oh, oh, well, there you go. There's something. See, there's. Anyway, no, so sorry. I not I, sorry, Brian. Clark. So I literally was like. <laughs> Brandy, we watch all these found footage movies. You love the genre so much. Pick something from yeah. that. And this is definitely the first one that popped in her brain because it's one of her favorites. And oh, and I, cool. it might be kind of a nostalgia thing, you know. Sure. Probably cool. watched it earlier on, you know, and then the fact of the real life connection to things. But uh yeah. um but yeah, I I, you, I still liked it. So now that you mention it, I'm thinking about actually putting my tape of this in the microwave. Okay. Oh my gosh. Jeez. <laughs> oh. I bet Brandy will take it off your hands. I know, no, and it's sealed. She'd probably love it. I think so. Okay. Well, it's, it's it's hers if she wants it. She can have it. <laughs> okay. Um, Jason, what is our last movie for this evening? Up next, we got this movie picked by our pal Stefan from all the way over there in Germany. That's right. We're big in Germany. Romans from there too. So yeah, I was gonna say two out of the three picks are from people from Germany. And uh, I know Stefan's been talking about this movie for quite some time, so I'm excited that he got us to finally watch it. And that's a movie from 2018 called Lake Michigan Monster. And then the monster attacked your father and took him away. Took him away and killed him. Might as well avenge the old man's death. The authorities say sea monsters aren't real. Or for that matter, lake monsters. Well, you see, our monster resides here. Yeah, we know it's Lake Michigan. It's the name of the movie. And this is my band of rowdy cutthroats, Dick, Nedge, and Sean Shaughnessy. Damn it, Sean Shaughnessy! This sounds like the work of someone who's a drunk. Wow, this thing's actually pretty big. Monsters aren't small, Nedge. Except for centipedes. monster has you in its grasp, and then it just lets you go. Terrifying, nevertheless. Next stop, Lighthouse Island. Do we have a boat? It's pronounced pontoon. I'm not sure that's right. Oh, hey, where are my clothes? <laughs> <laughs> hey, what are we painting here? It's a freaking landscape. Oh, yeah. Now I can see it. Everyone in position! <laughs> Dead man walking, Seafield. Oh, why don't you go shoot a timpani player? All aboard! 
The combined spirits of H.P. Lovecraft, early Sam Raimi, and Mystery Science Theater 3000 inhabit this action-packed tale of nautical daring-do and monster mayhem. Winner of the Audience Choice Award for Best International Feature in 2019. It's written and directed by Ryan Brixen and Cole Twos. And Ryan, oh, that's one word. Ryan Brixen, Cole Twos. Oh, I see what it is. Yeah. Who plays (laughs) Seafield himself? Uh, this movie is outstanding. Yes. Yeah, this is uh-huh. fun. This is this about is as fun time. as it gets, this guys. This is my favorite of the episode, man. <laughs> oh, easy. And without even looking at my 2018 top 10 list, this pro- this definitely would have been in the top 10, if not number one. Guaranteed. <laughs> this movie is uh, pretty dang funny. I mean, it's it's comedy first. But absolutely, yeah. Um, my goodness, it's just it is so much fun. Oh, it's so fun, it's so fun. I just outrageous. as soon as it started, I'm just like, Yep, this is Mike's movie, <laughs> Mike's loving it. Everybody's loving this. So fun, so fun. What'd you guys think? It's okay, <laughs> I think it's slapstick at it at its finest. I mean, it's there's you know, it's just a joke every minute. It, um, you know, between. Him, tr- him trying to recruit him back after all the failed missions. I mean, I laughed out loud when he when they're on the golf course and he th- and they're not wanting to go back with him. And he throws the ice cream sandwich at the back of the guy's head. <laughs> it's <laughs> awesome. Um, you know, between him talking about his brother and you know he he says his old ass wife, you know, and he he lives in a museum and he's just he's such a he's such a grifter. But he he really wants to kill this sea monster, and um, yeah, you know, between the names of you know the operations of you know them trying to kill the sea monster, and just yeah, and just the 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 style of this and the way that it's shot, it's 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 made it's it's of course you know uh you know it's it's of course it's got it's like sound it's got sound but it's it's shot in a way that like a a silent film you know would have looked and yeah it's just it's really well executed it knows exactly what it is and it's just it's damn funny yeah i freaking love this this is totally this is totally my type of movie a thousand percent yeah it's black and white all the dialogue is overdubbed and those two elements alone I love, I love, I so want to make a movie where all the dialogue, I've been wanting for a long time to make a movie where the dialogue is completely overdubbed. They weren't wrong in that description, uh, Jason, where they compared it to like early works of Sam Raimi, because it does remind, I didn't even think about that until now, but it does remind you a lot of the early Sam Raimi black and white Super 8s that he used to make, you know, stuff like um, uh, Cleveland Smith, which also I think was completely was black and white and completely overdubbed and the same style of humor. But when I was watching it, it reminded me a lot of the early works of like Alex winter. Um, you know, Oh yeah. Predating freaks. You know, you're talking like, uh, idiot box and, um, all the, uh, short films, uh, him and, um, I can't remember his partner's name at the time, but the short films that they used Definite that they did. Alex at winter New- energy. Yeah. Like squeal of death, which is a great short film that they did um, when they were in college and it, the humor is, is in the same vein and just, yeah, chaotic energy. And uh, again, dialogue completely overdubbed. Yeah. I really miss the days when Andy used to share with us his favorite quotes from movies, because I feel like he would have like 10 pages from this movie because there's so many just hilarious, crazy ass lines in this, in this film. I, I'm just sitting here trying to think of what to say and and points of this movie to to talk about, and I'm like, oh yeah, well, what about the when they when the guy asks where his uh, eyebrow makeup is, or what about this part? You right, know, it's a joke every ten seconds. How do you uh, sometimes it down? ten jokes in one one scene in the ten seconds? What? Yeah. <laughs> um, I love how the 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 third and uh, oh. The, all the do-it-yourself effects too, yeah. Um, which is just which just skates that line of like this. This is a really cool looking effect. Also, it's obviously super, done super cheap and cheesy, but on on purpose, but not 
over, but not like on purpose in a bad way. Um, oh, and, and I just love how he can have full on conversations with, with, um, sea creatures while he's underwater. <laughs> Never <laughs> needs to come up for air during that whole final fight scene with his sister. What? Anyway. Yes. Love this movie. And, um, Sean Shaughnessy, he will be missed. <laughs> Sean Shaughnessy. Yes, this is how you name characters. Nedge Pepsi. <laughs> Dick Flynn. Sean Shaughnessy. Sean Shaughnessy. What if Sifi. I just came in and I was like, this sucked? No, I, I, uh, you I've couldn't. Seen this one. Yeah. I saw this one right yeah. after uh, he recommended it on the Horror Hangout. It was on Arrow at the time and watched it and enjoyed it and thought it was hilarious and. I was happy to revisit it, and I knew you guys would love it, so I was glad that it popped up on this list. Yeah, yeah, man, it's the the movie has such energy that it for me, I just I just got a kick out of watching like uh, how much fun the editor must have had in being a part of making this movie. They're so. Many freaking amazing editing moves and things, you know, just like him flying through everything. God, there's just so much stuff that goes on. I almost I can't even, can't even begin. think of one thing. Yeah. Oh, this movie was fun. Yes, thank you, Stefan. Oh, for improving absolutely. my life with this movie. <laughs> Don't dip your French fries in whiskey. Apparently, that's not that's not tasty. Yeah, no. <laughs> So funny. <laughs> it's awful. Don't do it. Oh. <sighs> oh, yeah. Stuff. He wrote something too. Let me get oh. that real quick. Okay. He says on my wish list for a movie to be included. He says, I chose, I choose Lake Michigan monster. Why? Because I really love, I'd really love to hear your thoughts on this piece of cinematic treasure. And also, I just love this flick so damn much. Yeah, I agree with you a thousand percent, man. Touche. Yeah. Oh, have, are they doing more movies? Like, it feels like they're just some dudes down the road making this movie. I know. I should look them up because I, I you know, I mentioned Alex Winter before, and that's the thing that's kind of always bummed me out, like with the box office failure of Freaks that that style of movie making was felt like it was over. You never could, you never see a movie like freaks ever again. And again, if you watch those early films of Alex winter as well, it's, it's even crazy. Those are even crazier than freaks. And I just want more of that style. And this is it. This is totally it. So pretty excited. And if they do have more, that's in this vein, then I'm ready. To, I can't wait to check it out. The next one looks called, like, titled Hundreds of Beavers. <laughs> I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> Seems oh like something you would see at like a, a little <laughs> film festival and like everyone would, the audience would just love it, you know, Definitely. go crazy for it. I'd love yeah. to screen this movie. That's so oh, good. Yeah. Oh, if we can only go back in time. And wasn't Stefan showing off some sweet, like, uh, Blu-ray type of... I think he's got it. Yeah. Yeah. Nice yeah. yeah. Definitely would love to pick this up. Man, that's good. And we saw it on Prime? Yes. So a lot of people yes. could check it out. Yeah. Yeah. So freaking good. Lake Michigan Monster. Check it out. Highly recommended. Okay, so that's it for the movies for this episode, but we still have plenty more show to come. Uh, we're going to take a quick break so you can hear about our podcast network called the Prescribed Films Podcast Network. Um, the Prescribed Films Podcast Network, or the PFPN, is home to 30 different shows, including 10 Podcast Lane. Now, what is 10 Podcast Lane? Uh, 10 Podcast Lane is a podcast that deals with horror, myths, legends, and or horror. There are tens of thousands of stories out there relating to ghosts, monsters, and hauntings. Some well known, others not so much. Ten Podcast Lane deals with as many as possible. So check them out and all the other shows at thepfpn.com. We'll be right back. <laughs> Yeah, 
You're listening to the Prescribed Films Podcast Network, home to hundreds of hours of free podcast entertainment. The shows on this network all have a common goal, providing you with the best discussions about movies and other forms of entertainment media. The PFPN hopes to fill your ear holes with audio joy. Visit our website with links to all the other amazing shows at www.thepfpn.com. Thanks for listening. Welcome back to the show, everybody. It is segments time here at Attack of the Killer Podcast, and we want to hear from you guys, the listeners. Here's Jason with shoutouts. It's time for shoutouts! All right, we got some responses this time. Um, on our group, our Facebook group, um, we got Nick Leadham. So, th- so get your pencils and papers, guys. Let's write these down. We've got to look at these for future episodes. Nick says, Alone in the Dark, 1982. Oh, that's a great movie. Yep. Er- Martin Landau. Martin Landau, Donald Pleasance, and yeah. Jack Palance. And a very inspiring movie poster. Yeah, yeah, it's a great poster. We yeah. used for Demonica. Oh, yeah, that's yep. right. It was kind of the template. Um, Earth versus the Spider, 2001. Oh. oh, that's the, yeah, that's the remake, the remake one of the 50s um, Roger Corman film, maybe? Oh, no, Nick likes Uninvited, 1987. The Cat and Cat. That movie yeah. is awesome. <laughs> and his last pick here was uh, Metamorphosis, the alien factor a ton of Jello films. Oh, I guess it's. Yep. Andrew Moeller, Attacker Andrew. He says, Antrim. Yes. God, I got to make you guys watch that one one of these days. <laughs> he also says, Broadcast Signal Intrusion. Oh, I don't know that. That sounds way serious. Mm-hmm. That Attacker Brian Gotzel says, Loved Antrim. Yes. Yeah. I think I got to figure out a theme to include Antrim, but. I want to say, guys, do me a favor and just at certain points in the movie, just kind of look away for just a few minutes so I know you won't won't die after watching the movie. <laughs> All right. Now we got this guy named Brian Clark. Here we go. Not that we I'm ever sorry. let him pick movies when he was on the show. Here we go. We Through the Looking pick. Glass. <laughs> How many times is he going to bring that <laughs> one up? He has for quite a while now. <laughs> well, guess what his other suggestion is? Water power. <laughs> I should have known. Then Jonathan gets on. He says, that would probably be the most awkward episode ever. (laughs) Brian says, I've been threatening them with water power since I was on full time. (laughs) And so Jonathan, he gets in the mix. He's got kind of a Brian Clark size list here. Uh, He (laughs) says, uh, Jonathan says, Alucard. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Lamb. Oh, I don't know that one. Uh, Cool. Quater Mass in the Pit. Oh, of course, yeah. At Midnight, I'll Take Your Soul. Yes, Coffin Joe. Can we do uh, a Coffin Joe episode? I like the title until you said Coffin Joe. What? Just kidding. Beyond Dream's Door. Dr. Death. Redeemer, Son of Satan. Hmm. My brain's telling me you guys didn't cover Toby Hooper's Eaten Alive on your Killer Crocodile episode, but I could be wrong. We didn't. I just one, I just felt like the yeah. the crocodile part wasn't the main part of the movies. <laughs> and of course, all the great Italian horror classics to spread their joy and to keep them from falling into obscurity. Yes, Jonathan, one of the great voices preaching the Italian horror. We love it. And uh nothing on Instagram, but over on the Twitter we got Bad Movie Bunny Podcast. That's right. Lisa's over there. She says, hmm, there are a couple of good ones. Oh, gosh. The Stuff comes to mind. (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. Club Vampire had its charm, even though it lagged. Street Trash gave me nightmares at B-Fest when I walked into the auditorium at the worst part of the movie. I'm going to guess the the hot potato with the penis. That is possible. All right. Well, that's all of the shout outs we got there. But guess what, guys? We got a couple voicemails. What, what, what? That's right. Let's go to the first one. Hello, this is Aaron Reese of the uh, Campfire Indoctrination Podcast, part of the 
PFPN family. The unsung horror gem I'd love for you guys to talk about is the 1997 film Perdido Durango starring Rosie Perez, Javier Bardem, James Gandolfini, Screaming Jay Hawkins. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> well, yeah, sounds awesome. Great cast. Yeah. Stephen J. Hawkins. I didn't even know he was in the movie. And we couldn't get away without this guy. Here's another voicemail. Hey, guys. <laughs> your favorite attacker. Or maybe least favorite attacker after the Killer Furniture episode. Brian here. And it uh, sounds like this week we're talking about unsung horror movies. So a couple movies that come to mind that I love that I don't hear enough people talking about are Session 9. I know we did that for a watch party, so the listeners should all love that movie. Um, Eaten Alive with uh, Robert yeah. England does not get enough love. And Toby Hooper directed. And probably my favorite Wes Craven movie that no one talks about, the people are under the stairs. I mean, where else do you get a guy dressed in leather going around his house trying to shoot people up and that are living in the walls? Hope you guys have a great week. Bye. All right. Awesome. Thanks, guys. And you, too, can leave your voicemail. you got time. Give us a call, 415-952-6857 or 415-95-AOTKP. Leave us that voicemail. We'll play it on the show. Thank you, guys. That is shout-outs. You know that feeling you get when you drink a gallon of oh. expired milk while eating gas station sushi oh. that's been sitting in your car for hours on a hot, sunny day? Oh. That's nothing. Here's recasting with Christian Slater. and salutations and welcome to another episode of Recasting with Christian Slater. Where depravity and the lack of a moral compass are par for the course. Now normally I would inform our listeners of which movie we're about to completely eviscerate and ruin for you for, your, for the rest of your lives. However, due to scheduling conflicts, we were unable to get enough cast members together to provide you with an adequate show. But don't worry, folks. But don't worry, the folks at AOTKP have dug down into the archives and found another audition tape for The Big Lebowski featuring Arnold Schwarzenegger. Much like life, this show's format can change at a moment's notice. You ain't just whistling Dixie, Slater. (laughs) I rest my case. Not even scheduled to be here, ladies and gentlemen, Gary Busey. Gary, what the hell are you doing? I was in the neighborhood, and I thought I I heard you talking about life changing at a moment's notice. In the neighborhood as being here when you're supposed to be on time and the day that the show starts? Well, yes. (laughs) Um, Okay, what kind of wisdom are you going to drop on us about life changing at a moment's notice? Well, for one, it's a shock to the system. One moment you're having an orange Julius and the next you're beating a hooker half to death with a baseball bat. (laughs) 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 Woo! You see, you beautiful son of a bitch! Should have fucking known. Where there's one, there's the other. Ladies and gentlemen, Don Knotts. (laughs) Slider, you fucking pun! How are you? (laughs) I was fine until Busey confessed his first degree assault. What the hell were you thinking? Wait, wait. Let me guess. She did a line off your dog without asking. I know how you are about proper coke ed- ed- etiquette. <laughs> Heaven snow is nothing like that. I get coke dick and little Gary can't perform. I get that a lot! <laughs> Jesus! I'd say TMI, but we're way past that point. Spill the beans, Busey! I saw her queef a poodle balloon with a used condom. Scared the shit out of me. I had never seen such sorcery. 
I am so moist right now. <laughs> Penn and Teller can kiss my ass. That needs to be an act in Vegas. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. The ping pong trick is a little dated. That's it. I'm tapping out. Roll the goddamn <laughs> tape right now. Okay, uh, gentlemen, just uh, state your name and the role you'll be reading, and we'll take it from there. I will read the descriptions. I'm Jeff Bridges. I'll be reading the part of the dude. I think it's obvious who I am. They're not going to confuse me with anybody else. Uh, just state your record for the name, Arnold. Yes, but you just said my name. Just say your name. I'm Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'll be reading for the part for, of uh, the Fino. Okay, uh, gentlemen. Um, uh, let, let's, let's go. Page 112, please. The dude, he emerges on his front stoop, pulling on a shirt. His attention is caught by something down the street. A car is parked halfway down the block. We can see the silhouette of a fat man in the driver's seat. The dude starts down the street toward the car. The fat man leans forward, and we hear the sound of the car's starter coughing. The engine will not turn over. More whines and coughs. No ignition. The man hurriedly fumbles to one side and brings up a newspaper, which he holds before his face. The dude gets to the car, reaches through the dri open driver's window, and grabs the newspaper and hurls it to the, to the ground. Get out of the fucking car, man! <laughs> the man nervously complies. The dude flinches at the man's movement as he gets out. The man cringes in turn, reacting to the dude's flinch. He is wearing a cheap blue suit. He is bald with a short fringe and a mustache. The dude shouts to cover his fear. Who the fuck are you, man? Come on, man! <laughs> Relax, man. No physical harm intended. Who the fuck are you? <laughs> Why you been following me? C come on, fuckhead! <laughs> hey man, relax. I'm a brother Seamus. The dude is stunned. Brother Seamus? Like an Irish monk? Irish What the fuck are you talking about? My name is Dafino. I'm a private snoop. Like you, man. Huh? A dick, man. And let me tell you something. I dig your work. Playing one side against the other in bed with everybody. Fabulous stuff. I'm not... Oh, fuck it. Just stay away from my fucking lady friend, man. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm not messing with your special lady. She's not my special lady. She's my fucking lady friend. I'm just helping her conceive, man. <laughs> hey, man. I... <laughs> Who are you working for? Lebowski? <laughs> Jackie Treehorn <laughs> The Knutsons <laughs> who, who the fuck are the Knutsons <laughs> The Knutsons It's a wandering jobby Dada job Bunny Lebowski Her real name is Fawn Knutson Her parents want the back He's Fumbling through his wallet See you the dude looks at the picture. It is probably a school portrait, unmistakably bunny, but fresh-faced, younger-looking, with a corn-fed smile and a straight-bang partridge family hair. Jesus fucking Christ! Crazy, huh? Ran away a year ago. The Knutsons told me to show her, her this when I found her, the family farm, outside Moorhead, Minnesota. They think it'll make her homesick. Boy. How are they going to keep him down on the farm when to say, see, see Carl Hungus? <laughs> he hands back the picture. <laughs> she's been kidnapped, Afino. Or maybe not, but she's definitely not around. Fuck, man, that's terrible. <laughs> yeah, it sucks. <laughs> well, maybe you and I could pool our resources, trade information, professional courtesy, computers, you know. We hear distant yapping, growing, growing louder and with, with the hum of an and of approaching car. Yeah, I get it. Fuck off, Dafino. And stay away from my special, la my fucking lady friend. <laughs> the dude steps out of Walt to meet Walter's car, which pulls up with the yapping pomerating leading out of its passenger side.
This ends our dip into the archives here at Recasting with Christian Slater. And make sure when you hire a balloon artist for your kid's birthday, you do yourself a favor and do a background check. <laughs> Until next time, have an Orange Julius on us. <laughs> He made such classics as The Man with Two Heads, Bloodthirsty Butchers, The Rats Are Coming, The Werewolves Are Here, and The Ghastly Ones. With 31 movies in his filmography, we induct the legendary Andy Milligan into this episode's Insane's Picks Hall of Fame. Andrew Jackson Milligan Jr. was born in St. Paul, Minnesota on February 12th, 1929. He was a self-taught filmmaker, playwright, scriptwriter, and even costume designer. <clears throat> he grew up mostly in Minnesota, but he and his family moved around uh, around the country a lot. His mother was a neurotic bipolar alcoholic who physically and verbally abused her husband and children. Uh, she served as the basis for scores of her son's characters when he began making movies. After finishing grad school, Mulligan joined the U.S. Navy, where he served four years. After the Navy, he settled in New York City in 1951, where he dabbled in acting on stage and opened a dress shop. By the 1960s, Andy Mulligan began to make his movies. His first release... His first release was a 30-minute black-and-white 16mm short drama entitled Vapors from 1965. Set in the set in a notorious gay bathhouse, St. Mark's Baths, it was written by Hope Stansberry, the raven-haired beauty who would star in a few of his later films. The film portrayed an emotionally awkward meeting between a between two strangers at the bathhouse. Milligan was later employed by exploitation film producer William Mushkin uh, to direct a to direct softcore sexploitation and horror features, many featuring actors known from the off 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 Broadway theater community. Milligan and Mushkin uh, made eleven feature films together, all shot with a single handheld sixteen millimeter camera on short ends. Now, what are short ends? Short ends are snippets of film left over from other productions that are sold cheap because of the length of the film are various sizes. Some of those films they made include Depraved in 1967, Seeds of Sin in 1968, and Flesh Pot on 42nd Street in 1973. In 1966, Milligan set up shop in a Victorian mansion located on, on northern Staten Island, within walking distance of the ferry and his own house. The mansion is where he filmed most of his movies on budgets ranging from $5,000 to $20,000. Milligan would write, direct, build sets, and even sew costumes. At the mansion, he made some of his best-known work, including the gory horror classic The Ghastly Ones in 1968. The Ghastly Ones, a 19th century period piece, and his first color film, three married couples are forced to spend the night in a Victorian-era house where they start getting killed off by a deranged psycho who is bent on claiming an inheritance they are all entitled to. In 1969, he made his next horror film, Torture Dungeon, in, uh, a medieval period piece, uh, he made he made a move to London, England to make movies there after he made a deal with producer Leslie Elliott. After directing Night Birds in 1970 in London, his partnership with Elliott collapsed as he was working on The Body Beneath, also in 1970. Milligan then teamed up again with William Mushkin, where they produced... Or where Mushkin produced and Milligan directed three more period pieces... Um, three British horror films, which were Bloodthirsty Butchers, The Man with Two Heads, and The Rats Are Coming, The Werewolves Are Here. Milligan returned to Staten Island in 19, 1970. Once he returned to New York, Milligan wrote and directed another medieval period piece entitled Guru the Mad Monk, which was shot for the first time 
with a 35 millimeter Airflex camera and filmed entirely inside a Manhattan church. Sadly, Andy Milligan contracted AIDS in 1989. At this time, he had no insurance and was flat broke. Andy went into reclusion until his death on June 3rd, 1991, at the age of 62. Andy was a troubled and disturbed man, but was able to express himself through his art. So for this episode of Insane's Picks Hall of Fame, we induct the legendary exploitation filmmaker, Andy Milligan. And that concludes another episode of Attack of the Killer Podcast. Special thanks to the attackers, Brandy, Stefan, and Roman for picking our movies for this episode. I know what you're saying. No fair. I want to suggest a movie for the show. I know. I know. It isn't fair. Let me tell you a little secret on how you can pick the movies we watch for the show. You can do it in three easy steps. Step one, become an attacker. Step two, become an attacker. Step three, become an attacker. So go to jointheattackers.com. Become an attacker today. So thanks for listening. We will all talk to you soon on the next episode of Attack of the Killer podcast. Sean Shaughnessy. <laughs> Bye-bye. Oh, no. Could this be the end of? <laughs> Attack of the Killer podcast.